Hello, I am Paul Ura. I am the Warning Coordination Meteorologist here at the National Weather Service Office in Austin, San Antonio. Today, we're going to talk about our 2024 winter product changes and the criteria that we use for some of our winter products and what we call hazard simplification. Our 2024 winter product criteria and products. We typically will issue a couple of winter weather products during a given season, winter weather advisories, winter storm warnings, and just only in a few isolated cases, an ice storm warning. We'll spend a few minutes talking about each one of these products, when we issue them, and the criteria that we use to issue these products. The winter weather advisory is a product that we'll issue typically several times during a winter season. There is some coordinating, cri coordinating criteria that we use, especially when we coordinate with surrounding National Weather Service offices, with ice accumulations of a glaze up to an eighth of an inch, snowfall that ranges from a trace up to less than two inches, and sleet that ranges from a trace up to a half inch. Those minimal amounts of ice or snow typically only leads to minimal travel impacts across roads and bridges, et cetera. The overpasses, of course, are typically the first places where we see ice accumulating. And thus, even though if we do have a lot of overpasses closed, we do know that really affects travel, especially in the uh, urban areas. But overall, we don't expect a ton of closures during our winter weather advisories. I will say that even if we have these amounts of ice accumulation, which tend to be just maybe a little bit, if it is a bad timing, such as rush hour on a Friday in an urban setting, or if we have reports of multiple travel accidents uh, with vehicles because of uh, ice on roadways, we may actually upgrade our winter weather advisory to a winter storm warning, just strictly on impacts. So let's talk about those winter storm warnings. The official criteria that we use at our office is ice accumulation of greater than an eighth of an inch, snowfall that is greater than or equal to two inches, and sleet that has fallen that is accumulated to equal to or greater than a half inch. This amount of ice typically does lead to significant travel impacts. Major roads and interstates are typically either impassable or very difficult to navigate. Uh, the snow with freezing rain or sleet can actually then add to some power outages that we have. So again, uh, maybe the event started out as an advisory, but very, very quickly because of either accumulation or the number of traffic accidents or impacts uh, could be upgraded to a winter storm warning. In very rare cases where we're just getting freezing rain and we know or we is forecasted the accumulation to be greater than or equal to one quarter inch of ice, uh, that's where we'll use the ice storm warning. This will lead to widespread power outages across the region with this much ice that's accumulating on power lines and also trees. One thing very unique to this portion of South Central Texas is our live oak trees. Unique because the live oak trees do not drop their leaves except for maybe just a few weeks in the very, very late winter or early spring. If a tree has a lot of leaves on them when the ice is occurring, that will add a massive amount of weight onto the tree and tree branches, leading to those trees to fail, break, tree branches breaking, and then onto the power lines and lead to those additional power outages. The winter storm watches will typically be issued maybe up to 48 hours ahead of when we think that dangerous winter weather is possible. We would be considering the considerable travel problems that may ensue, but the confidence is still only medium. So this is our preparing time. Now, if the dangerous winter weather is expected within the next 12 to 36 hours or is occurring, that's where the winter storm warning will be issued. So again, we are expecting considerable travel problems during those winter storm warnings. And you do have to take action. A lot of the action that we'll be asking people to take is to stay home and stay off those roads. And again, if there's potential dangerous winter weather between 12 and 36 hours out, but the travel difficulties are expected to be, I would say, fairly minor. Uh, again, mainly the overpasses because of maybe just a little bit of freezing rain or a slight glaze of ice. That's again where the winter weather advisories would be issued. So a lot of cautious uh, driving, um, caution out there. If you don't have to be on the roads, I would still recommend not being out on the roads during a winter weather advisory. But most of the roads would be passable just with some uh, delays. 
So let's talk about some of the new products that are coming this season across the National Weather Service uh, with our hazard simplification. Cold weather advisories and extreme cold watches and warnings could be issued. So how did we get here? Through hazard simplification, surveys of the general public, surveys of our core partners, Windshield warnings and windshield advisory products are going away. They've now been consolidated into these extreme cold warnings and cold weather advisories. This provides the opportunity to establish improved thresholds for communicating dangerous cold with or without wind. Basically, cold is cold, regardless of whether or not the wind is blowing or not. So what kind of criteria are we gonna be using locally for the cold weather advisory product? Well, as you can see on the map, in the dark purple out in the hill country, including the Austin metro area, 15 degrees is our criteria for this product. And further south along Interstate 35, Interstate 10, down by the San Antonio area, the coastal plains, it'll be 20 degrees. So what this means is that if the air temperature or the wind chill temperature are going to be dropping to those criteria, we would be issuing a cold weather advisory, especially if they're going to be dropping down to those criteria for at least a couple of hours. As you know, there are some naturally cold spots in some of the counties that, yes, we could hit some of those temperatures locally, but if they're not going to be widespread temperatures hitting the 15 degrees or the 20 degrees, then maybe we'll, we'll not issue a product. But if it's widespread cold, then we would be. For the extreme cold warning, the criteria out in the Hill Country in the Austin area is 5 degrees and 10 degrees elsewhere across South Central Texas. So again, air temperature, or the wind chill temperature. If they get down to those five or 10 degrees, we would be issuing extreme cold warning. As you can see, as you go further north in the state, the criteria is colder. As you go further south in the state, the criteria is a bit warmer than our region. We will still issue a freeze warning, especially for the first killing freeze of the year. The freeze program is designed around the agriculture users and partners. Because we don't have a lot of winter agriculture here in this portion of Texas, especially the South Central Texas um, hill country, coastal plains, what we typically do is we'll issue a freeze warning for the first killing freeze of the year, just to give people a heads up that yes, winter is here, winter has arrived. So if you do have those freeze sensitive plants that you have out on the porch, a garden, et cetera, uh, you'll need to know that from now on, you'll be needing to pay attention to those forecast of low temperatures literally every day to kind of see when uh, we may have freezing temperatures uh, then on. Now the hard freeze warning is typically um, talking about temperatures at or below 28 degrees. Now the hard freeze warning is going away now. It's being consolidated with just that freeze warning. We typically have hard freezes several times per year, especially out in the hill country. We will still use that terminology of a hard freeze in some of our products, like our forecast discussions, the cold weather advisories and the extreme cold warnings. And just so you know, the hard freezes typically do bring the times where we have frozen pipes, some plant and tree damage, especially to, to plants and trees that are susceptible to cold. And so there are impacts to that. But locally, to get those frozen pipes and the significant impacts, we do typically have to have temperatures well down into the 20s and even maybe the teens. And sometimes those have to last more than a day for us to get some significant impacts like that. There are proper ways to measure ice, especially if you're a storm spotter, by reporting on social media how much ice accumulation has happened. Radial ice versus flat ice. Flat ice is easy. Uh, if there's ice accumulating on your picnic bench outside or a flat surface, just simply take a measuring stick and measure the thickness, and that's your report. So on the far right, you can see that's an accumulation of about five eighths of an inch of ice accumulation. So just a little bit more than a half inch. The radial ice or the ice that accumulates on um, tree branches, uh, tree limbs is a little bit more complicated. What you have to do is take an average of the ice that's on both sides of the branch, especially if it is windy and there's freezing rain that is falling when it's windy, ice will tend to accumulate more on one side of the branch than the other. So to get an official measurement for radial ice, you measure the ice thickness on both sides of the branch, add that up, and then divide by two. There's a great website that the National Weather Service has in order for you to see social media plans, infographics, 
some videos, presentations, and also a lot of Spanish content when it comes to winter weather. So it's weather.gov slash WRN slash winter underscore safety. And finally, what is the outlook for winter this season? Well, if you look at the temperatures, uh, they're likely going to be above normal for much of the winter season. This is very typical what we see during La Nina conditions, and that's what we are expecting. We're expecting to have a weak La Nina pattern develop uh, this fall and also over the winter time. So uh, what that means is overall we're expecting temperatures to be warmer than average. That doesn't mean that we can't have several Arctic fronts. That can't mean that we won't have a significant ice storm. In fact, the last previous winters where we've had some significant ice storms, overall those winters have been warmer than average. With the precipitation, we're expecting below average precipitation as well. Again, this is in line with the La Nina conditions that are expected to continue through the winter time. So unfortunately, this is what the forecast shows, especially because of our ongoing drought situations across South Central Texas. The seasonal drought outlook does show this, drought development and drought persistence over much of Texas. So unfortunately, the short-term impacts will continue with only slight improvements, maybe from some of the recent rains that we've had over the past week. And because of those drought conditions continuing, uh, look for some fire weather conditions to continue as well until we get some much needed rainfall. So be aware of that as we get cold fronts to come into the region, uh, the winds kick up, dry conditions, the dry grasses out there, uh, could lead to some enhanced fire conditions and potential. So thank you for attendance. Hope you enjoyed this and enjoy the winter season.